so let's begin with the portal system so uh, before going to begin we'll first uh, discuss about what is portal way what is portal system and where they are located okay then we will discuss the uh, different types of portal system present in our human body so first is uh, what is portal system so portal system is, is actually consists of portal vein okay right like uh, uh, let me share some pictures so that we can understand what is a uh, portal vein like this one you can see here this is first portal vein here here is the name portal vein okay this is the first which is which connects your uh, uh, intestine to the blood vessels this blue color is the blood vessels which is a vein actually and it is connected here right that is why this is called a portal vein there is no portal artery always veins are there second diagram i just want to show you this one which is present in the brain okay so brain have two parts uh, adeno hypophysis and the neuro hypophysis here you can see anterior lobe and the pituitary uh, and the uh, anterior and the inferior uh, row so you will find that this one this yellow colored anterior part of the pituitary gland is connected with the artery which is called uh, hypophyseal artery okay there is one more blood vessel which is called hypophyseal vein that we are going to discuss here okay so these two comes under the portal system okay so let's begin with the uh, about what is portal system and what is the significance of these portal system so first of all you can write one line about it that portal system is consist of is consist of veins consist of portal vein right it's branching or you can say it's branches and capillary all together we call it portal vein uh, i mean portal system now the question is what these portal systems are doing so they are collecting blood okay so second point you can say that portal vein collects blood from one organ i will be specific in the section when when we will discuss about portal vein and hypophyseal vein one organ by a system of capillaries and divide into a second set of capillary in an intermediate organ before going to the final blood vessel before finally returning to heart like take an example let me give you one more very basic example which, uh, which we all know like suppose this is liver right and this is suppose small intestine right small intestine and liver they are connected by a blood vessel which is called hepatic portal vein actually in neat there is no digestive system there is no portion of the, of the digestive system that's why this part is not there in the slivers but this is a very basic type of uh, portal system 
uh, which you have studied in grade 10 also i guess if you have uh, human physiology right if you want i can show you one more image image of portal uh, hepatic portal vein okay Let me show you blood circulation because in the blood circulation you will see all the blood vessels. Yeah, you can see here, but let me copy this. But let me show you here only. Sorry, yeah, this one. Yeah, this one. Can you see this one? Gut, right? I guess I can copy from here. Okay, let me save it. Then I can paste it here. Yeah, this one. So this. this is the gut which is a small intestine this is the liver and this particular blood vessels this is called hepatic portal vein that's what i am trying to show you here this is also a type of portal system okay now, let's go ahead Next is, uh, so there is a two portal system are found in the human body. So we'll see two portal system in human. So this is the third one, hepatic portal vein, which we are not studying. This is not in the syllabus. So first we will start with uh, hepatic portal vein. Sorry, it is there, sorry, hepatic portal vein. Okay. If you have digestive system topic, then might be this particular content will be there, but in, in the needs labels, there is no digestive system. So we are studying hepatic portal vein. So you, so you, uh, so you can see here what this portal vein is doing. They are collecting so see, they are connecting gut to liver, right? This is the connection. In in the gut means what? Gut means a small intestine is, and small intestine have uh, really like projections, which is called, uh, 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 what we call a uh, villus, right? Villus we call. Let, let me show you the structure of the villus, how they look like. Villus Billy, this one. Let me copy this. So see what is happening here. In your in your small intestine, there are uh, finger-like projections are present. We call them as a uh, villus or villi, right? Inside the villi, this is the blood vessel and this brown color is the lactal which is a lymphatic system now what they are doing uh, this vein can can you see this blue vein this vein yes. which is, this is going to this is going to liver right and the name of this particular blood vessel is hepatic portal vein got it Did you get the exact location? Okay, mm, and then yeah. and, and and then this one lactals. What lactals do? They are, they absorb all the fats and they bypass the liver. Okay, they are bypassing the liver and then they drain all the uh, food uh, fat substances in the blood directly. 
but here all the nutrients means uh, uh, glucose amino acid is going to the liver first right and then liver will allow further whether it is good or not that is going to be checked that's why liver is called checkpoint when when you are going from one city to another city there is a checkpoint right which checks all your things whether it is good or bad if it is bad then they will hold you right in the same way before going before the nutrients are going into the blood it is being checked by the liver that's what hep uh, hepatic portal veins are going to do okay so let's talk talk about hepatic portal vein so first we'll see what they are doing so you can say hepatic portal vein collects collect the blood from elementary canal and divide divide into a second set second set of capillaries into liver So that is why liver is called intermediate organ. So they are connecting. What will go in and out? If if you will see when when you are crossing one city to another city, there is a toll plaza, right? That is a connecting point. Same here, the food and the body. Who is acting as a barrier in between the transportation of food and the food to the whole part of the body? That is the liver. Liver is the checkpoint, which checks everything. Even you are drinking any poison, the liver is going to detoxify the toxic effect. Right? If you have taken a small amount, liver will try to minimize the body damage with that particular chemical. But if you have taken overdose, then liver is, is I mean liver also has some limits. They can't go beyond that. That's why sometimes people get badly affected with the chemical. So in the liver, uh, in the liver, hepatic portal vein offload substances, right? So this is the blood vessels. So what blood vessels do? They absorb the glucose amino acid. So these two are going to released in the liver. So in the in the liver, hepatic portal offloads substances such as uh, glucose, amino acids, etc. Then what is happening? Then what is the significance of uh, uh, this significance of up uploading? So what liver is doing let's see first liver is first um, the extra glucose is being converted into glycogen right so you can say liver regulate regulates glucose level by glycogenesis and glycogenolysis means formation of glucose and formation of glycogen or you can say a degradation of glucose both the things are done by liver right so in bracket you can say glucose converted into glycogen and glycogen is again further converted into glucose depending on the demand right second second function is deamination deamination and transamination these are organic chemistry term hope you know this any idea I uh, 
No. No idea? Okay, let me tell you in brief. Uh, amino acid is consists of carbon, then carboxylic group, then ammonia group, right? Then you have a hydrogen and then there is a variable group, right? R, R is the variable group. This carbon is the chiral carbon, means it shows optical uh, uh, isomerism. In case of deamination, what happens? Ammonia group is, this is toxic part actually. So this must be removed from the amino acid. So from all the amino acids, ammonia part is removed, right? And that is filtered in the kidney. And the process is called deamination, removal of ammonia group from the amino acid. Now, what is the meaning of transamination? Transamination means one amino acid is converted into another form of amino acid. This is called transamination. Conversion of one amino acid into another amino acid. Got it? So these are the two terms. Hope it is clear now. Next. Third function is detoxification. Means minimizing the toxic effect of toxins. Also releases repairing fibrinogen, prothrombin, vitamin A, very important, and vitamin A. Vitamin K. All these things are produced by the produced uh, and released by the liver. Right? Now let's talk about the second portal system, which is hypophyseal portal system. Any question from hepatic portal system? Let's come to uh, no? okay. Fine. So let's move to this particular portal system. This portal system is present in the brain, in the lower part of the brain. Okay. And we call this hypo. Hypo means the lower part of the brain. That's why hypo physial. Okay. This is uh, this whole thing is this one. This whole thing is called pituitary gland. Right? And this gland have two parts, anterior and posterior lobe. So this is anterior and this is posterior. In the anterior part, there are blood vessels which is going into and then coming out. So this um, red colored blood which is going in this particular part is called hypophyseal artery. And now the question is which is vein? This is the vein. Hypophyseal vein, HV. This pain we are now we are going to study about this particular vein. So as you can see, hypophyseal portal vein collects blood from hypothalamus. Hypothalamus of the brain. And forms a second set of capillaries in the anterior lobe. Anterior lobe of pituitary gland. Right, so this is anterior lobe and these are the branches, the blue colored branches of the blood vessels. These are called hepatic portal, sorry, not hepatic, hypophyseal portal vein. Okay. What they do? They transfer hormones 
so it transfer releasing hormone from hypothalamus to anterior part anterior uh, lobe of pituitary pituitary gland so first what they are so they are a set of blood veins and what they are doing they are transferring the hormones from hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary uh, lobe okay next what these hormones are doing so you, you can say the that the releasing hormone stimulate or you can say inhibit the secretion of tropic hormone TRO PHIC tropic hormone from pituitary that's their function okay this is also very simple they are the sets of blood vessels which is connecting from hypothalamus to the uh, anterior lobe of the pituitary gland what they are doing they are sending the hormones released from the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary what this hormone is doing this releasing hormone they are acting as a as a inhibitor or they are acting as a as a stimulant for for the secretion of tropic hormone in the body okay any question from from this section this is done yes sir i mean i've understood okay let's talk about the third type but it is not there in in the slavers even it is not there in the sorry not in the slavers not in the human actually but it is there so that is called renal portal vein Okay, this is a special mention I can say because this is not found in the human body. So first very important point you must write that it is absent in mammals. It is absent in mammals. Now the question is why it is absent. So, the, so what has happened when this absence, this uh, I mean, absence of renal portal one vein is due to the transition, due to the transition from aquatic to terrestrial mode of life, and due to the gradual evolution of uh, four chambered heart. That is why the renal portal vein is not required in the human body. Okay, so in in the bracket you can also write that this is due to transition. Transition from aquatic to to terrestrial uh, mode of life and gradual evolution of four chambered heart. Now let's talk about the main point, where this portal is present, what is what they are doing. So first of all, it is found in fish. So you can say in fish, amphibian, reptiles, right? renal portal system is well developed. Highly well developed, and in 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 the birds, it is vestigial organ. So you can say it is vestigial in birds. Any idea what is the term called vestigial? 
Yes, so, um, it's an organ that's present but doesn't really have much of a Any function. functions. Yeah, they're not doing. So, okay, where this portal system is, so this portal system vein, you can see the, the renal portal vein, open in kidney. which act as uh, intermediate organ. Right? And um, in all these organisms, fish, amphibians, reptiles, their uh, kidney is acting as an intermediate organ. Okay? And there are lots of veins which are connecting to the, uh, to the kidney. So what is the main function of these veins okay so these veins they are collecting extra salt then some waste substances from the kidney right? so you can see that kidney tubule extract waste uh, waste and excess salt from the blood to regulate the osmotic concentration of blood. That is why this system is working. So that is all about your portal system in the human body and in non-human bodies like non mammals you can say okay so now let's talk about some some disorders okay then we will complete this unit disorder first disorder is hypertension also called high blood pressure high bp this is very common disorder which is found nowadays in, in in any age group even if the child is born and they have a high bp right so now this is becoming a very common cardiac uh, disease in the human first of all it is a condition when bp is actually higher than the normal right? this is a special condition it never have to be but it is happening right? so you can say it is a condition when bp is higher than normal so normal bp is what normal bp is 120 by 80 right but in case of higher it will go beyond 120 and the high BP is leads to heart disease and it also affects uh, your kidney, your brain, right? So you can see the second point that high BP leads to heart disease. And affects vital organs like um, heart brain there are many so so uh, these are the main uh, organs which is being affected by the hypertension second is coronary artery disease coronary artery disease now let me show you what is the coronary. So if you can see this particular image, in this image they are showing the blood vessels. There are two main art arteries and veins going in the in the heart.
heart to supply nutrients and the oxygen so this is these two are called coronary artery what they do they supply oxygen nutrients to the heart muscles because they are continuously working right so you need of need of a continuous supply of the nutrients and the oxygen sometime these particular blood vessels are being clot you can see here let me show you one more picture this one you can see here this is the uh, this is the coronary heart i mean coronary heart uh, vessels blood vessels and this particular picture shows that there is a flat uh, fat being deposited and they are they have made a plaque deposition here which causes problem right so problem is when the blood vessels get blocked right? so you can see that often referred as arteriosclerosis means clotting due to deposition of calcium fats and cholesterol molecule and you can say and fibrous tissue which uh, makes the lumen narrow and that is why the problem starts because now these blood vessels are blocked nutrients are not reaching to the heart muscles and slowly disease will reappear means the uh, cardiac problem will reappear in the body next let's talk about the third condition that's called angina angina is is a condition in which um, there is an acute chest pain in the body due to the blockage because there is a demand in the heart muscles and the demand of oxygen demand of nutrients but it is not being reached because the coronary vessels are blocked in that condition person will feel chest pain and the chest pain will go towards the hand side towards the head side okay so let me write the condition also called angina pectoris okay next what is symptom symptoms are very common in this you will find uh, acute chest pain this is very basic common uh, due to due to not enough supply of blood to heart muscles more uh, mostly uh, more common amongst middle aged people and old age so that's the last point more common more common among uh, middle aged people and older people right and this is very uh, uh, preliminary uh, stage where you will find the chest pain and other problems and the last is heart failure means a state of heart when there is no pumping right so you can say state of heart when it is not pumping blood effectively to meet the needs of the body 
right and it is also called congestive heart disease very common it is also called congestive heart failure can i show you a, a video on this particular thing it's a two or three minutes video hope uh, it will help you to uh, to understand more better so let's begin with this Atherosclerosis is a life-threatening disease that may have begun to develop during childhood. This condition is a process in which deposits of fatty material, called plaque, build up inside the walls of arteries, reducing or completely blocking blood flow. Although the exact causes of atherosclerosis are not clear, many scientists think it begins with damage to the inner wall of an artery, called the endothelium, substances traveling in the blood such as cholesterol, fats, and cellular waste products accumulate inside the damaged area of the arterial wall. Chemical reactions occurring within the buildup of material cause cholesterol molecules to oxidize. This initiates an inflammatory response in which the endothelial cells at the damaged site release chemicals that signal a call for help. In response, monocytes from the bloodstream travel to the damage site. Stimulation from oxidized cholesterol converts the monocytes into macrophages. The macrophages eat and digest the cholesterol molecules. As a result of this process, the macrophages change into foam cells, which accumulate to form plaque. As the plaque increases in size, the arterial wall thickens and hardens. At the same time, smooth muscle cells within the arterial wall begin to multiply. Most of the smooth muscle cells move to the surface of the plaque. These cells contribute to the formation of a firm, fibrous cap covering the plaque. Eventually, the passageway through the artery narrows, enough to reduce blood flow and the amount of oxygen received by the organs it supplies. Over time, the cap may erode and break open, releasing plaque into the bloodstream. The plaque can flow downstream and contribute to the formation of a blood clot, which can stop blood flow. As a result, Limited blood supply is available to the area surrounding the partially blocked artery. Degrade right, so this is the part of the heart which is not getting sufficient amount of, oxy of oxygen and the nutrients. And that is why the problem begins. So this is the uh, beginning and the basic uh, um, idea how the heart disease develop in the body. Hope this is clear. Mm, yes, hello.